From Krima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. State-owned ESCOM's Kamati Power Station in Mpumalanga will be decommissioned and repurposed this year. Darren Parker tells us more. The South African Renewable Energy Technology Centre, which is based at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, together with the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet, have signed a partnership agreement with ESCOM for the development of a new training facility to be established at the soon-to-be decommissioned Komati Power Station. Our vision for Mpumalanga is that it will continue to be the energy hub for South Africa. The shutting down of Komati and its repowering and repurposing is the biggest jet project globally. In terms of shutting down a coal-fired power station of this magnitude, but not just locking the door and throwing away the keys and walking away, but actually having a very set plan in terms of the repowering, the repurposing, the training, is the first of its kind. So we've had very intensive discussions with funders. We have a funder that's confirmed that will fund all of that. Um, and, you know, it, it is a really positive story. So I think in the midst of the crisis that we're in, my colleagues that are dealing with load shedding, that are dealing with making sure we are uh, operating our plants that are operating and making sure that we get them to uh, optimal operation are there doing their jobs. Those of us involved in the future of the country, in the future of the ESCOM are here doing our jobs. And I think that is extremely important to focus on in terms of what is the hope of the future, what is the message for the future. In addition to the training facility, Komati, which once had 1,000 megawatts of coal-fired generation capacity, will now be repowered with 150 megawatts of solar, 70 megawatts of wind, and 150 megawatts of batteries. This new capacity will be brought online by 2030. ESCOM has also established a containerized microgrid assembly factory at the decommissioned power plant. We celebrate ESCOM's vision to prolong and revive Komati Power Station as center of economic activity for the region and the surrounding community. ESCOM's plan to increase Komati's generation capacity using clean energy technology ensures that this community will continue to be on the map as an energy producer for the rest of the country. But new technologies require new skills. There is need for a well-trained South African labor force that can, co can operate these new technologies. The Komati Renewable Energy Training Center that we are launching today is a people-focused initiative that will train and prepare today's labor force to meet the needs of much needed new generation capacity. The partnership agreement is said to offer an opportunity for the creation and scaling up of new industries across the renewables value chain. Taking full advantage of these opportunities would require the retraining and upskilling of parts of the South African workforce, which is what the training center aims to address. The most recent State SA report state that unemployment rates are now at around 34.5%. A project of this nature directly addresses that concern because with our united approach, we are directly creating an enabling environment for under-resourced communities to assess economic opportunities. The new training center is envisioned to be the first of many across the country in future. With its acquisition of local pump and part manufacturer Keto Pumps last year, US-based heavy-duty slurry pump manufacturer Shoko Slurry aims to continue to increase its global footprint. As such, Shoko Slurry unveiled its new one-piece cover plate liner at this year's Electro Mining Exhibition. Sabrina Jardim tells us more. Shoko Slurry MD Emil Fori commented that Shoko Slurry's acquisition of Keto Pumps has enabled the company to leverage its expertise and establish a bigger reach in the African market. He explained that this has, consequently, enabled the company to expand its offering to the Middle East and Europe as well. The benefit that we had with the, the acquisition was that it was really part of a global footprint and it really enabled us to just leverage what we've got and use the expertise and the, the staff that's already familiar with a global market and slot that into the Sherco vision and footprint. And it really enabled us to just grow that footprint even more. 
Forey explained that the one-piece liner ensures greater safety for pump installations and decreases liner installation time. Hence, he said the liner provides a simpler and quicker way to replace parts in a pump. The one-piece is mostly available on most of the ranges, but at the moment we've limited to the H6 HS pump with the objective of rolling it out across the range on all the pumps. And then in addition to that, we're looking to expand and to bring new materials to the market that we also want to approach and, and provide additional solutions for mining companies. Forey added that the product was developed in the United States and is being rolled out into the African market. The objective really is to introduce the polyurethane uh, mix to the rubber mix that we've currently got, just to give that flexibility from a technical perspective on the solutions that we want to drive to the clients. We've released it in the US market really over the last two years to test the product, to test the usage of it and how economically it's been running and that's been really successful over hundreds of clients and installations that we've already done. He added that the company also has other products in the pipeline. We're currently looking at the polyurethane range which we want to add to the rubber range. As far as we know nothing like that is currently in the market so that's where we're going to be uh, most of our focus. With Shoko Slurry continuously investing in new technology and in modernizing its product realization strategy, Forey said technology has allowed the company to become more competitive and to ensure that its products are of adequate quality. The technology is at advanced through Shoko Slurry over time, investing quite significantly and changing from our two cat model to our free cat model to our fully assembled modeling. And this is a finite element of the Shoko Slurry sort of enablement to provide and ensure that we give quality products to the client and value to the customers, ensuring that we test and we make sure that the quality that we built is what the client ultimately experience. In addition to this, we've really invested and we're investing more into ensuring that we deliver a life system enablement for clients and for the internal systems which is being based on our ERP system that goes live so that we can give clients access to what's going on into the value chain of delivering products to our clients. Forey explained that technology has also been beneficial for the company's operations. It's brought Shoko Slurry into the power base of Slurry Pump companies where we we can compete with the best out in the market, ensuring that not only do we provide a quality product, but we've also got the ability to use technology and leverage our staff and our technical expertise to deliver to the clients across the globe. And it's really enabled us to, to live to the values that we want to create by doing things right the first time and making sure that it's on-time delivery for the clients. That's Cleveland Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.